and welcome back uh, to our next session today. Dear Ago, data through innovative research leads to inclusion, growth, and outcomes for all. My name is Becca Bolas, and I'll be moderating today's session. A few reminders before I introduce our speaker. The first is that we are offering conference captioning services, and within this session, you'll be automatically provided with the captioning, which is underneath the video stream. If you don't need the service, you can push the pause stop button and it will stop. Uh, and the second is to please be sure to complete the session evaluation. It's four short questions and your feedback is very helpful to us. And this is a requirement if you're seeking continuing education credits. So with that, I am now excited to introduce today's speaker, Maya Dyke from Healthy Living for Maine. And with that, Maya, I will turn it over to you. Awesome, thank you, Becca. I hope everyone has had a a wonderful kickoff to this year's uh, virtual conference. I'm happy to be with you today. You'll see on my screen that Kristen Overton, our Chief Strategy Officer, is also listed. Uh, she has a, a major hand in this presentation, but is unfortunately unable to be with me this afternoon. get started, I'll scroll through here. Um, a really quick presentation overview. Really the agenda today and what I want to discuss with you guys is healthy living for me, kind of the background and who we are, but also our community health needs assessment and that partnership. We do have preliminary results that I'll uh, quickly share with you guys today. Um, also leaving some time for some questions. So if you do have any, please put them in the chat. And then a high level review of our learning objectives. Uh, my goal is that everybody listening in, I'm happy you're here, uh, will understand how a community integrated, um, excuse me, a community health needs assessment uh, can be de developed to target uh, social determinants of health needs for a specified population, in this case, um, all Mainers. And um, also for individuals to learn how the assessment, um, the data analysis and review from that can support system thinking and change, as well as recognizing how a network lead entity can be a change agent for a community integrated um, health network, especially in rural states, which Maine is. So the preliminary results, I want to give a, a little shout out and acknowledgments to everybody listed on the screen. This will, uh, would not have been possible without our partnership with the University of Southern Maine's Master of Public Health program. Uh, we kick, you know, launched this uh, effort um, with our first intern through that program uh, last semester and with our other partners listed on the screen. This is really highlighting the title of this presentation as well, how innovate, innovative research and collaboration with multiple groups can support um, better outcomes for all. So background a little bit, just in case uh, you have not heard about Healthy Living For Me, we are the statewide network of local organizations, health systems, and volunteers that work together to empower individuals to take control of their health. Through tailored services, we do provide low cost um, and free options that are personalized to focus on the entire individual rather than a single condition to improve their overall quality of life. As the leader of a statewide, main statewide community integrated health network, also pronounced SIGN, our mission is to coordinate and align community resources to improve the health and wellness of the people of Maine. Our evidence-based and health and wellness programs provide Maine people with the skills and resources they do need to take control and improve their quality of life, as I mentioned above. So what is a community integrated health network uh, or sign? You'll hear me say sign throughout this presentation. Um, it is a newer title. And so I do wanna touch on that briefly today. A community integrated health network is an organizing model connecting healthcare and social services. What that means is that it's a coordinated group of visible and trusted community-based organizations led by a specific entity uh, known as the network lead entity. 
uh, the uh, signs are scalable and can offer a one-stop contracting spot for multiple proven interventions and programs for those that are contracted with it for in-home uh, person-centered thinking, planning, and practice. So in summary, I talk a little bit about the NLE, the network lead entity, and the sign, uh, kind of uh, higher level lingo, really to summarize here at the bottom, it's a nice way of putting it. So as the sign, which Healthy Living for Me is for the state of Maine, we do bring many community providers together to provide similar services under one contracting source, which makes it easier for funders and Mainers as a whole, so people accessing services. I give this high-level overview at the beginning of my presentation because I really wanted to highlight how this preliminary result review and the continuation of our community health needs assessment and data compilation is helping organizations and Mainers uh, statewide. So the purpose, right? The purpose uh, for us uh, as a sign is to focus on expanding our programs to better meet the needs uh, and specifically the health needs of adults of all ages in Maine. So in partnership, as I mentioned earlier, we did set out to conduct our first full on community health needs assessment to gather information directly from Mainers living in diverse settings. The goal is to learn, the goal was and still is because we're in phase two of this assessment now, is to learn uh, the chronic health conditions that most affect adults in the state of Maine and better understand the impacts those conditions have on our communities. Additional outcomes of the assessment would, were to shed further light on the gaps in community services, how to best prioritize and deliver uh, the existing programs that already fit under the sign, and how to tailor future programs to meet the needs of the unique communities or, or cohort uh, that we are working with. Examples may be rural towns in the state of Maine or the unbridged islands uh, of Maine. So methods used for the preliminary uh, phase one of this community health needs assessment was a online 29 question survey, which was really broken into a few different categories. The survey was open from June 4th, uh, 14th, excuse me, through July 14th. And it was available for any adult Mainers to respond. The following, that, the following slides that we're gonna go through are the preliminary results. I wanna review that quickly with you and then circle back around to how, uh, again, collaboration, uh, doing these innovative kind of projects do allow us to better serve uh, the populations that we have set out to, to do so. So uh, subsequent versions of the survey will be provided in paper format. Uh, this presentation really was created uh, prior to the launch of the phase two. So I will talk about that a little bit toward the end of our conversation, uh, but also a focus um, after these initial results is to really target other populations, which you'll see um, based on the results, why, why that's stated. Um, it was available for response by all adults, like I mentioned, who were interested and willing to complete it. It was initially uh, promoted and released through all social media platforms of Healthy Living for Me, our joint venture partners as well, uh, which include Seniors Plus, Spectrum Generations, and the Aroostook Area Agency on Aging, three of Maine's five area agencies on aging, with the other two acting as providers of the network. Eastern uh, Area Agency on Aging and Southern Maine Area Agency on Aging. Uh, so along with uh, our joint venture partners, we had all of our other community provider partners share this information virtually. Additionally, we um, had email invitations to complete and share this survey to all staff, our volunteer pools through the AAAs and our uh, connected contacts. Um, as well as uh, past participants of programs. 
active volunteers, as I as I've mentioned, and those that may no longer be active, as well as um, just other contacts that we have uh, through health systems um, and so forth. So the first category um, of the preliminary results that I get to share with you today is in the demographic category. So of course, any times we're, we're setting out to uh, better serve a population, we need to figure out who is responding or who is in need. So we heard in phase one of this uh, community health needs assessment survey, we heard from 639 uh, respondents. You'll see here of the 16 counties, we did hear from people in all 16, but based on the responses, we have learned who we need to target in phase two. Cumberland County, Kennebec County, and York County were the top three that we heard from. Age ranges, you can see here on the screen that of the 639, uh, the majority of respondents identified as being between the ages of 65 to 74. And as far as gender, those that have responded most identified, 505 of them identified as female. We primarily were able to target through this online survey, individuals who identified as being white, with others um, between one and 2% uh, choosing another category. You can also see here, uh, again, this was an online virtual survey that the majority of individuals had some type of higher education, whether it was uh, whether they were a high school graduate or had their GED, some college or technical uh, training, college degree or graduate study a very small portion identified as only having some elementary school, middle school, or high school experience. The second category that we solidified and really honed in on was around health status and support needs. This first question on the screen is, in the past six months, have you researched or identified a need for more information in any of the following? You can see that multiple responses were allowed for this question, and the top three responses were um, research for information on physical activity or exercise programs, chronic disease or conditions, and nutrition uh, slash diet and education. Uh, the next question are challenges that health challenges that you or a family member or friend have experienced. You can see that the highest response rate was around arthritis needs um, or a health challenge that someone's ex experienced, um, as well as high blood pressure and overweight or obesity. The biggest health crises that you think your community is facing, um, we heard again from a lot, of, a lot of responses because we were able to uh, choose multiple responses for this question. The top three were, um, as you can see on your screen, affordability of healthcare services, availability of mental health services, overweight, obesity, uh, substance use disorders, um, drugs, alcohol, and so forth uh, listed here. Continuing with the health status and support needs category, we heard primarily from individuals who did not see themselves as being a caregiver. You can see here that we defined caregiver in multiple ways from being a caregiver of in individuals with mental health disorders uh, to an individual with cancer or being a guardian parent of a minor as well as Alzheimer's and or dementia. Moving forward, you can see that uh, the majority of individuals either stated that food and nutrition significantly or play a large role in their overall health and well being. Where on the right side of our screen, we see that about 50 50 responded that they would be somewhat or very interested in taking a, a cooking or nutrition or food program. 
So although most identified that yes, food and nutrition do contribute to one's overall health and well-being, only about 50% said they would be very interested or somewhat interested in taking a program. These three questions captured individuals' feelings of lack of companionship, uh, feeling left out, feeling isolated from others. We really wanted to embed this in our community health needs assessment, uh, again, to have those outcomes to better serve individuals, especially as we are uh, still operating under a COVID-19, a pandemic um, delivery methods and so forth. So what type of programs are people in need of right now based on these type of responses for depression, uh, loneliness, uh, feelings of connectiveness? You can see the responses on the screen. And these were out of the 639 individuals that we did hear from. So hardly ever were the majority of the responses Whereas, uh, you know, less than half um, responded that they uh, felt lack of companionship often or some of the time. When it came to the question of primary language, this is a, the third category of preferences for information and services. 634 individuals uh, most identified with speaking English or their preferred language, excuse me, was English. How interested would you be in attending a low cost program? These would be classes or workshops offered statewide to learn about keeping yourself and or family members healthy. Somewhat was the highest response. You can see this on the screen, as well as 100, excuse me, 120 responses as being very. When um, asked if they chose a little or not very interested in attending a program, why that was, you can see that um, there were a bunch of others that were um, other reasons why people would not be interested, but the primary response was that the information, uh, they did not feel uh, they needed it or wasn't helpful, uh, as well as um, lack of time. So lack of time was also identified. Uh, when do you prefer to participate in programs? Most people still stated that weekdays, Monday through Friday, would be their preference. The majority of individuals would prefer to take programs mid-morning. Um, all great information that organizations providing services uh, for social determinants of health uh, should be aware of. And when it came to the method, the preferred method of learning, again, really coming out of uh, COVID-19, the shift in the, the ways that we were able to deliver programs, we see that the preference still uh, lies in in person. So in-person programs versus uh, virtual ones. Although we did also receive responses of 191 individuals saying that they prefer a hybrid. So um, it, really interesting results, uh, although just preliminary, uh, we're able to start um, analyzing a bit more. For ongoing communication, the preference of those that responded is through email. And when it came to video conferencing platforms, we have um, identified that the respondents preferred Zoom. Although multiple responses, as you can see on the screen, were allowed. When it came to access of programs and services, the majority of individuals stated that they did have transportation, that they did not need help funding transportation or arranging transportation. And again, on the far right, uh, individuals primarily stated that they were able to drive themselves or that they had reliable other means through friends, families, uh, taxi services, maybe for some of our uh, cities in the state of Maine um, or a volunteer service. When it came to um, insurance providers, only 12 individuals indicated that they were uninsured, where the majority of individuals stated that they had a commercial plan or Medicare. 
And when they were asked if they had access to the internet, 590 uh, plus actually 28 said that they had, uh, yes, they had internet or yes, they had limited, maybe through a community room or a local library. Uh, the specifics, I'm going to go back to that slide, the specifics were not um, asked for that question. So some key takeaways that I wanted to review uh, with the group today is that the information presented in this report represents phase one. I know I've stated that many times, but this is just phase one of the Community Health Needs Assessment Survey, which did include an online English survey. When uh, the survey indicated mark all that apply or something similar, participants were able to respond to multiple answers. 27 of the 29 questions that we asked were required, while the two below, um, if you chose a little or not at all interested in attending a program, why? And question number 29, if you would like to hear from Healthy Living For Me, please provide us with your contact information. Those are the only two optional questions from the survey. As stated earlier, we received 639 virtual responses six, um, from all 16 counties in the state of Maine. Uh, the percentages here, as highlighted earlier, indicate the top three county respondents. And uh, respondents' ages range from 18 years old to 94 years old, with the majority identifying as Caucasian or white at 98% and female at 79%. So why I'm highlighting these major um, key takeaways right now is as we have launched into phase two, it really speaks to how these type of partnerships and research can really support change when it comes to anything. But in the case of our community health needs assessment, the programs uh, that the Healthy Living for Me Network is, is providing for Mainers. Um, a second key takeaway I've highlighted on the screen it was uh, in response to question number six. In the last six months, have you researched or identified a need for more information? Uh, the most frequently selected answers were as followed. Uh, also discussed just briefly um, as I was running through the, the data with you guys. Uh, one I didn't highlight was social activities, which was the fourth most chosen. 170, 171 respondents selected none of the above or other. And when it came to other, uh, there was a field for people to fill in responses. It was specific to say Parkinson's disease. It was very, it was very specific um, research and needs that they've identified. In response to number seven, what health challenges have you and or a family member experienced? The, the following are the most selected. Um, we can kind of see some trends here across questions. Arthritis was top, obesity and overweight, high blood pressure, physical activity, while uh, 119 respondents selected none of the above or other, again, indicating uh, sp specific needs um, at less than 1% of response, uh, responses. This indicates that further program explanation may be needed through the Healthy Living For Me network. It also suggests that some of the programs that are currently being offered uh, have a significant need for Mainers still. An example I've put on the screen is Tai Chi for, Arth and uh, tai Chi for Arthritis. Um, as arthritis has been the, the number one um, indicator so far. More to come as phase two in the final report uh, is compiled. Another takeaway is that when asked to identify the biggest health crises you think your community is facing, 384 respondents selected affordability of healthcare services. This is interesting and worth noting because only 12 of the respondents that completed the survey for phase one selected that they were uninsured, which may suggest a overall coverage gap, 
um, and concerns around what actually is maybe embedded into certain plans that members are on uh, for type of you know, support programs and services. Additionally, the availability of both mental health services, uh, 313 responses, and dental care, 221, were also listed as major concerns within the respondents' communities. Again, highlighting maybe a concern with coverage gap versus um, being uninsured in general. 599 of survey responses indicated that food and nutrition contributed significantly or played a large role in their overall health and well being. I highlighted this earlier while reviewing the results because it's interesting that, as uh, noted here, only 53% said they would be very or somewhat interested in participating in a program of uh, food, nutrition, cooking of that realm to support the overall uh, health and well being of themselves or someone maybe that they know. One explanation um, of this is that uh, we can see that 41% indicated that they were college graduates and 32 indicated that they completed uh, graduate studies. So, based on this, it could be that individuals feel that they have the knowledge and means of providing um, and doing their own research to uh, be able to support these needs. Maybe they're aware of you know, healthier food choices. Maybe they have access to healthier food choices as well in terms of the costs associated with that um, and transportation. So a lot of this speaks to who uh, was able to respond to this phase one. Uh, who had access to maybe the virtual, um, the virtual survey, but also access to a device to complete it. Transportation was the least selected barrier to attending programs. Uh, many respondents wrote in reasons why that they, you know, why they had little interest in programs as a whole, and this was not just pertaining to food and nutrition. So this was programs in general. For that second piece. Because transportation was the least elected barrier to attending programs, we um, can see that because 607 individuals indicated that they had transportation, that this really aligns. Uh, many respondents wrote in reasons why they had little interest, as I mentioned a minute ago, um, which really is a reflection of how this relates to maybe their clients, their community, and their ability to complete their own research. Others indicated that their health condition act as another barrier to participating in programs. I can specifically speak to one example of that where an individual wrote that uh, sitting through um, an hour program or a two and a half hour program was something that they could not do at this time based on their chronic pain conditions. So truly that acted as its own barrier. And um, some use this field to fill in specific responses to healthy living for me. And that's just, again, one example of uh, barriers that people have identified uh, with the two highest being what I mentioned earlier. Feelings of loneliness and isolation can be uh, and play, can certainly play a profound um, have a profound impact on our health and well-being. Due to COVID-19, people were asked to spend more time at home and away from their friends and still are um, based on different variants. So although Maine has made great strides in reopening um, its communities, some individuals may be experiencing and may in the future experiencing uh, experience some of those lingering effects. Uh, from the prolonged isolation. To understand this a, a bit more, like I mentioned earlier, we did embed the University of California at Los Angeles's three question loneliness scale. The three questions are highlighted below. You can see that approximately 46% of respondents answered often or some of the time to each of these questions of how often do you lack companionship, how often do you feel left out? And how often do you feel isolated from others? 
more important than ever before as we are trying to uh, best serve and uh, are collecting this data to best serve Mainers across program. Most respondents, 84% uh, indicated that their preference was to attend programs during the weekday, Monday through Friday, and uh, also um, multiple responses were um, allowed for the time of day. So maybe some individuals marked off their preference of attending mid-morning and evening. Maybe it's one or the other. Uh, you can see here the number of respondents, 595 that preferred early morning through noon, 305 selected afternoon, uh, but before five o'clock, and 152 respondents selected after 5 p.m. In person, 40%, virtual 26, and the hybrid being 29 were the most popular choices for delivery method of programs. The most selected video conferencing platform, as I stated earlier, was Zoom and email was the preferred uh, choice for communicating with individuals. So the next steps for the community um, health needs assessment is the dissemination of a paper survey, the same survey that was offered online uh, to include but not, uh, not limited to the minority groups that were not captured in phase one, to um, non-English or secondary English speaking residents in Maine, recipients of other uh, community health services such as home delivered meals programs through the triple A's and residents residing in alternative living communities. The paper survey with an online option uh, for response for individuals just learning about this uh, project did begin on September 7th, so launched last month. Listening sessions are also happening statewide, uh, both in person, one per region, and virtual um, slated uh, are happening this month. Now that we're in October, it's flying by through November. If there is um, any information that you would like to receive, please reach out because I'm happy to share it. We do anticipate the publication of the final report by the end of this year. So that's it. Sorry, I have to hop in. We're a little over time. Um, sorry about that. Sorry to have, to, have to interrupt you. Um, do you, there are a lot of questions for you. And so I'm wondering yeah. if you have a slide with your contact information that people can follow up with you. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, slides will be available. I have the review of kind of objectives and again, just circling back to, to how these larger projects can support all Mainers. Um, I'll quickly fast forward. I do apologize about that. Um, for questions, please reach out to myself um, or Kristen. I know Kristen wasn't here today. Uh, we do have multiple means of getting a hold of us, but my contact information is on the screen. I'd love to hear from um, any of you uh, who would like to learn more about Healthy Living for Me or more about this project. Maya, that's great. Thank you so much for your presentation. Like I said, there are um, a lot of questions. People are really interested in this and in learning more about the methods and have some questions about the findings and next steps. Um, yeah. So just to underscore that, uh, please feel, please, you know, reach out to Maya and to Kristen with their contact information there. Um, and Maya, thank you again for, for being here and for having to step in solo. I know that that's, you know, sometimes a, a little stressful. Um, and thank you too to everyone who was able to join today's session. Um, we're going to take a brief break. Uh, we'll be back uh, in, at 3.20 p.m. Um, our next session, our final session for today is addressing health-related social needs to improve rural health, ideas for action, key elements of a rural community-based demonstration to advance whole person care um, with Deb Dietrich and Andy Coburn. And last plug to please complete this session evaluation using the feedback button. And um, with that, I just want to thank you again, Maya, and thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for having me. Enjoy the rest of today's session.